Yeah. 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 A lot of people have off games and still play really well. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get going here. We're talking about you know, some of those things. It's kind of how, it, how things fit into that is not maybe crystal clear in some cases, but, but really it's, it's not going to cover every single topic and be like, okay, here's a progress monitoring. It's just some of the things that we do in class um, that we've done over the course of the years, and a lot of it, honestly, we've gotten from uh, a professional math development series we've been going to for, for a few years um, and, and pulled out some strategies and stuff like that that we've related to what we do in the classroom or and the, that's all math stuff. So that kind of helped us to say, here's a specific example towards math and, um, and how it works in math a little bit uh, for that part. I think a lot of the things that we talked about too, Barry and I, a little bit, um, we've come to adjusting our schedules a little bit more often than we used to, as you mentioned. So like, and, and you just talked about this the other day too, we both have our Friday kind of as an open day in terms of let's see what happens during the course of the week and then based on how we're doing on our understanding and our progress and stuff like that and some of our little formative assessments whether it's just a kid working on a sheet in class or we're throwing problems on the board and stuff like that we might say okay well let's let's change this up a little bit um, which down the, in the end of it could cost us some days on certain things we we need to make sure we cover here and there but uh, if we don't know what the heck we're doing and we just keep going on then we're going to really mushroom and, and get in a big rut as we deal with that part so um, a lot of things we talk about will kind of be uh, getting related to some of those things up there on the board. Um, and there's some things we'll show up here too as we go through. But one of the things that, that I've used quite a bit of uh, throughout the course of my years here recently is, is kind of having, having kids look at a problem on the board and then kind of discuss it with each other. And not, not a big thing, obviously, just to pair and share. Uh, but when they discuss it with each other, I try to, to walk around as much as I can and try to just get some of those words I hear them say. And so I'll get up there and say, now Braden, what would you say about that at the beginning? So we're going through that problem, and when we look at how we're doing it, we're kind of assessing their knowledge by just listening to them a little bit. And, and then one kid sharing here, one kid sharing there. Uh, sometimes I'll have kids take their actual paper and just go put it up on the Elmo and show their work up on the screen as a way to assess their work, or as a way to also show, hey, this is a great example of showing their work, and uh, here's what we want to have for expectation. Um, as well as having kids just put the stuff on the board, which is kind of a normal thing. Now, it's math, that's probably easier, but if you have some sort of process to work out, uh, that can be beneficial to have them see those good examples, as opposed to me always being that model for them, saying, here's how I do it, but here's what a student did. Okay, so you guys can have to do that. Uh, the other part about the, the parent share part um, that I found, and we, we talked about this in one of our sessions at point two, was three ways to to essentially call on students. Uh, you want to have, and they talk about having purposeful selection of a student. So when I walk around with the parent share part and look at their work, uh, I will purposely select a student to show their work up on the board, or purposely select them to share in class. Well, I'll talk to them and say, hey, would you, would you share that right there? Um, and two, you have a random selection of a student. So I have note cards where I sometimes will randomly select a student. So you have a purposeful selection, a random selection, and then the third one was a volunteer, uh, which, you know, then you're trying to get, get more kids and hold them accountable a little bit more so. Um, so as part of the pair share process and sharing stuff up here, and in a way it's, it's kind of it's assessing how they're doing at that point on, on their knowledge of stuff and, and checking for their understanding as you go. Um, so there's a couple things that I use, or a few things I use for that and uh, uh, throughout my process of going through things. Um, one thing that, that Jill kind of asked me to mention about this this uh, session too was some of the things I've done with feedback um, and just student feedback. And I think a few years ago she might have, uh, or somebody pulled this out and showed it to, to staff a little bit, but I use this form maybe once or twice a year with my students. And this is kind of a bigger form than just doing, um, like on the, the wall over there, the what's my effort and what is my understanding part that a lot of people have in, in this building. Um, that's kind of a quick one as far as, okay, where do you think you're at? On the way out the door, show me what number you're at for your understanding. There are three, there are two. Uh, or right on the board and just tally it, okay? This is kind of an overall <coughs> one that gets more into the students, um, specifically, always, sometimes, or never, just basic. And just really kind of goes back to the expectations I have in my classroom about are you checking your Google stuff and getting the stuff out of Google, checking PowerSchool, asking questions, getting your assignments done, and, and we kind of talk about trying to get the student to make a shift to the left. 
So if they're sometimes doing it, let's try to always do it. If you're never doing it, let's sometimes do it. Um, and I tell them, yeah, you could always make a never and an always, but that's probably not realistic. If they're never doing something, let's at least give them a try to do it sometimes, which um, is more than nothing, obviously. And I talk a lot about Google resources. I do share some things through Google with them as well. Uh, so I want them to be checking their email for, for notifications or, or Google for things that I've shared with them, review sheets, uh, actual worksheets and stuff like that. At the bottom then as well, I talk about how they respond to failure, because that's kind of discussion itself. Uh, I also do what could the teacher do to better help you. Now it's, there's some interesting answers there. Um, uh, there's always some great comments about uh, things that we won't get into, but uh, some of that stuff I, I look at, and if you see quite a few students, one of the things from this form is actually talking about the homework process. So because of some feedback I received on this, I said, okay, let's change up homework a little bit. So I kind of made the homework for that next unit to be into, uh, I said, okay, here's the whole chapter in terms of a packet, like a packet of information. Um, here's the entire chapter, let's start work. And, and I've gotten away from trying to lecture, which leads to work, and made their work lead to lecture, in terms of if I walk around to the students and I see that we're struggling with something, I'm going to go talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it in advance because some students don't need it. Um, in some cases. Right now I have a stuff, a packet of like 10 pages and, and I gave it to him Friday when I was gone and some kids are already through the entire packet and some kids are on section 3 essentially or maybe 2, section 1 or 2 and some kids are through section 6. Um, and so I'm hoping that those kids that are done will be, become teachers in the classroom to help my student teacher ratio in terms of helping the kids that, that are really struggling and that's kind of the plan is to differentiate in that way and help you know, that one of the challenges too that I talked about my PD plan was what do you do with those kids that are up here? How are you gonna what are you gonna do for them to help them be more challenged and not just sit there and wait because they'll be waiting for two weeks otherwise. Uh, so um, I try to get them to help some people out. But part of that started with um, you know just doing some things different because of what they what they said on these feedback forms. And you know you, you're not gonna adhere to every single student's request obviously, but um, after we did that chapter where I changed the homework up, I gave them a Google, uh, Google form that I shared with them. And the first question, a little small there, but um, this is one thing I started doing too, is a little, um, I, I kind of like it. Uh, at this point in the year, what is a good grade for you on your quiz or test? I just asked them for a percentage there because I was, one of my things I've worked on is trying to do some more individual communication with students, not just face-to-face, -face, but also uh, through a, maybe an email or maybe just through some feedback on their test or feedback on their reflections or whatever it happens to be. And I found myself giving feedback on quiz and tests, but it was only the people that got A's. Nice job, great work, you know, just a little thing like that, which was a step of improvement for me because my expectation was everybody should get A's. Well, no, that's obviously not realistic. But um, So some kids have put, I think they're pretty honest, they, some kids put down 82% was their good grade. And I said, well, you got to base it off of what you've done so far this year. So if a student always gets straight A's in math, and all of a sudden this year they're getting B's and C's. Now, in this case, in this class right now, it's what's your good grade. Uh, so now what I do when I grade a quiz or grade a test, and we usually have about two quizzes and two tests per chapter, I look at the grade in my grade book and I say, okay, did they meet or exceed that number that they gave me before? If they did, I'll put, nice job, good work. You know, so I'm not just saying good work, nice job to the A's or the high B's, trying to be more, um, uh, getting some more feedback towards those students that are doing maybe as best they can, and, uh, and that's maybe a C and stuff like that. Um, dislike or like how we were learning throughout chapter four. So that's what I talked about. They kind of had some feedback to change chapter four up. So I did that. I said, what do you like about it? What do you don't like about it? Explain it to me. And then I kind of went back to some of that effort stuff over there. Um, with what's their effort been for the semester and how has their understanding been for the semester as well. So, um, you know, I dug into that a little bit and, and made some adjustments here and there, uh, which is part of my differentiation and, and the check and understanding part two um, throughout the course of the semester. The, the last thing that I talked about a little bit, I guess, was the last two questions. Did you just yeah. use those four things? Like, they, that yep. was their choice? Yeah, yeah. those four, the one through four there. So I could just see those numbers on that spreadsheet right now that part. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about and share before Barry takes over here a little bit would be that um, this started from, I think we did a book group way back when, 
uh, I can't remember what the name of the book was. Uh, we, we did a book group. What started making me think about grading. Um, Ken O'Connor. Ken O'Connor. And so with that back then, I started thinking about grading and stuff. Well, what I do now is I, I truly don't do much with homework grades and the grade book and stuff. Um, and we usually take a quiz at the halfway point of the chapter and then a quiz at the, half, the second half of the chapter. So I have a first half quiz and a second half quiz. Um, and when they take those quizzes, it covers those first three sections, the next four sections, whatever. And then we usually have two tests per chapter. And so what I've allowed students to do, which is it works for me, I know Jim uses something like that too, or he has used it in the past uh, before, is based on how they do in their tests, they have the option to take their test average and replace their quiz grades. Um, and the, the idea is just that we take a quiz two weeks ago and they got a 60%. They take a test two weeks later and they got a 75% on that test. Well, they're doing better. You know, so we talk a lot about improving and, and learning from mistakes and stuff like that. Well, um, they're allowed then to kind of adjust their grades based on how they're doing now as opposed to how they were doing way back then. You know, if it's a homework assignment and they didn't turn it in, or a homework assignment they got a little grade, that was three weeks ago. But if they show they can do it on the test, why is that homework grade back there still pulling their grade down a little bit? And maybe it's an effort thing, but then that's what we're, you know, we're going to meet on grading stuff in our school, maybe look into grading too. But that's something I've done that I, I really, I, I do like it, because I can talk to the kids a lot about learning from mistakes and improving, and if you do that and earn it, we'll help you out. It's not just helping, it's saying, hey, here's where you're at. Uh, so it gives more of a story where they're at, hopefully, which is kind of the progress of them going through their steps. Cool. Go for it. All right, so just kind of elaborate what he, what, you know, what he was talking about. But um, I'm just going to show you some documents that I do to help me with all four, four of those concepts up there that I think, um, and it doesn't help me. I mean, it does help me understand where I'm at teaching with, but it also helps the students kind of see uh, where they are at depending on what type of uh, skill we're on. I actually got this from the sixth grade team, and I think they presented at one of them, but you know, I, I'm starting to use this a little bit more. Um, this just, uh, we call it a student objective sheet, but uh, the MA, this is just your standard eight through one, tells you what the standards are uh, covering. And then you have your pre, the pre-understanding, and the scale, the one, two, three, four, is what we use. I got the same, same ones everyone else has, but that's kind of what they think they are at on according to that um, standard there. So, you know, a lot of them don't understand, like in this one, for example, they're like, well, what's a, they didn't understand what algebraic expression was. And so right away they, they had to put a one or two down. They think they knew, but not quite. So, um, and then we do that for however many standards we are going to cover in that chapter. Um, the post then obviously is, this is after they take the test and you know, we focus on that part, see what they get off the test, and then come back and do that again to see kind of, you know, where they are at after we went through a whole chapter on solving inequalities or solving multi-step equations. Um, because in that way, when I, I spend about two days before we take the NISA test, and we do a NISA, big, large NISA review, and I can look at these and I can group my students. Uh, okay, this this group needs to focus on equations. This group needs to focus on focus on a coordinate plan, whatever it may be. So, but I think it's um, you know, it's 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 handy. I'm glad Stu thought of this idea for us, so so I could steal it from you. Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of based off what um, uh, the Waverly when they were here was like. It's like You're right, no, yeah, kind of his concept too. So uh -huh. that was a good idea. But um, you know, part of uh, you know, I guess you could throw this under formative assessment or even progress monitoring. But each day, pretty much each day, I have a, um, a daily homework quiz. Um, so what I do is I, uh, you know, we'll go through, we'll do a practice assignment, and they'll have one of these daily homework quizzes over, like, you can see 7.1. Um, they have, to, you know, they, they do a practice assignment, and then the next day, we'll, we'll, they get a short little quiz over this. And this kind of helps me understand where they are at on this skill. And this one is more specific on um, translating verbal phrases. So, you know, and I picked this student because she's one of my students in the slow that I get a, that I have to that I get to work with. So, but um, 
I like these because, um, you know, if they if say the student didn't do well that Friday, which I kind of leave as a flux, uh, a day of open, I can pull students on that Friday, and we can work on we can work on these on these types of uh, uh, skills. I don't know. I always put a grade on it, but I usually sometimes won't put it in the grade book. Um, but you know, they think it's in the grade book once they see the score. But it gives them an idea of where they are at and you know what they need to do better at. So. But I do like these, and then you know, like Nate said, he gives um, about every what third, fourth lesson. It's a it's a mid quiz, and that's I still do the same thing. Those things are obviously main, uh, weighted more, so we still give two quizzes at each chapter, and then a test. So um, this sheet uh, just kind of help you with slow documentation. Um, this student here, I kind of track each day, every other day, whatever it may be. How much time I spend with them, for example, like day, Tuesday, the time we review this quiz, and I might put down a note on what we did um, as far as review. But it's just more documentation. I think that you have towards your slow is um, pretty important. So, and Jill recommended me doing this, so I'm doing it. So, but I do like it because it kind of, you know, I just, I don't know, you can look back and see, okay, yeah, I did this, this, and this, and with the student. Get you good feedback on what you know did. So, um, as far as differentiating, uh, got this from that the math workshops that we go to. But you know, they we I use this a ton. It's just overhead sheet with dry erase marker and then a little eraser. And then inside of here, I have all these papers that each student has in their desk. Um, for example, like this sheet. If we're working on um, finding percents of numbers. I can say, okay, find the sheet in your packet, pull it out. Um, he said something about, you know, in the past it's always been more lecture, or lecture led to work versus work led to lecture. So now, I don't have to sit up here in front of the room and talk as much. I can give them an example problem, and their work is going to lead me into what we really need to focus on for whatever, you know, our target skills. So, you know, I have, I think they, and they're just quick. You can see it. Students show their work. They hold it up, and you can say, okay, boom, got it, got it, got it, and so on. But you know, you, I got tons of these. Like, I don't know. They're just they're they're quick and they're handy. This one's probably my favorite. It's a transversal, uh, working with alternative and interior angles. But we play with M and M's on it, and they oh man, they love it. So they get really really excited for it. But you know, bingo. I don't think you do bingo on there, but in your classroom. But like I said, it saves you. You know, it saves you a lot of time. So I would highly recommend it. I mean. You know, depending on what subject you teach, obviously, but for math, I know we use a ton. I think we order them each year with our budget that we have, so I would recommend do it, doing it because it's just, um, you know, it's, it's easy, easy feedback, so. Um, you know, the motivation part, as far as differentiating goes, I put up there ABC. Um, I try to give students at least three to four options of homework because they're each class is, you know, it's, we were talking about it at lunch today, like it seems like in Ashland we have really high or we have really low. We don't have those middle learners. And so, you know, I always give them the three choices. And with our curriculum, curriculum that we have, it gives us three to four options for per assignment. So I offer it up to the students, hey, you can do, you can do worksheet A, worksheet B, worksheet C. And then I got the algebra one from um, uh, Dan. And a lot of students pick. I mean, I'm amazed how many people pick the algebra. But I'm also amazed how many people pick worksheet A, which is obviously the easiest one. So, but I think they feel more comfortable with it. You know, it, it fits their fits their level of needs. And then, you know, we talk about pair share. I don't sit up here and read the answers to them anymore. Like you know, when you check your worksheet, want to take me forever. I let them get together with a partner, and this is what they go over. I'd say, okay, circle which problem. Um, if you have a question, circle that problem. We'll go over. That's our, kind of our class review, depending on what questions they have, which helps us lead into our daily homework quizzes. So I use it as a review, but also it's a way for them to check check their answers. So um, I don't know. I think differentiating me. I, plus, I get bored, you know, teaching some things over and over. So I try to mix it up as much as I possibly can by using these using these sheets. So. Barry, if you're leveling their daily work, how do you then assess that at the end of the unit? How do I assess it? Do they have separate assessments depending on which worksheet 
you know, each one gets this, so that's kind of their assessment, and they get the two quizzes in the middle of the chapter, I mean, quiz and uh, the chapter, two quizzes per chapter, so, because those are tied into whatever our standards are, so. Okay. But, so these aren't graded? No, work. I don't grade any day that's the homework. That's just practice. Yep. And they, they know if they don't do their practice, more than likely. I mean, obviously they're smart, intelligent ones can get away with not doing homework, but that's why I like challenging with the algebra or worksheet C to get that repetition rep the practice in. Um, yeah, grading homework for me in middle school is, I don't trust them enough because I know they're going to cheat, so I'm not going to give them that grade. And I want their grade to truly reflect mm -hmm. what they know about. Um, you know, your objectives that you're covering, so. But, and, you know, the ones that don't do it, obviously, on Fridays, they get to sit with me and work in a small group, so. And you're going to have those. I mean, they just part of motivating them. So, so what are your high kids doing when you're working with your small groups? Uh, mainly working on those algebra sheets, so. Mm -hmm. Or they're, they could be teaching one another on the next lesson, so. Um, yeah, we, I mean, I feel something. I think stations as well, like I try to give them stations on review days with the computers and sometimes Friday that's what the higher ones are doing is, you know, there's some good good um, uh, math programs out there such as, uh, uh, what's the one? Con? Yeah, Con, sorry, Con Academy, you can get them hooked up on that. So. Did you have to rewrite any of your tests and assessments based on kind of your standard? Um, one? Is that kind of an ongoing thing? For ongoing, you? yeah. Okay. I no, I haven't really rewritten them, uh, crossed them off because most of, some of the assessments that I have are not included, or they don't include the standard. So, or they, they include the standard, but not uh, they don't even know it. So, yeah. why don't you tell them about the, the four corners game because that that's a little oh. different. Just probably help your higher students with your lower. Oh level. yeah, that, yeah. Tried this. It's called Truth or Fibber. I don't know if you guys are familiar with four corners, the actual classroom game. When I was teaching elementary, we I had to do it to kill time. But you basically set up four corners. Students go to corner one, two, three, or four. And then you got one person in the middle who hides their eyes. And they say corner three. So if you're standing in corner three, you go sit down. So we changed it to, I got off the website, changed it to a truth or fibber where you give them a multiple choice question, A, B, C, and D. So I would give every one of you either a card that says truth on it, or I'd give you a card that says <coughs> fibber on it. And so I'm going to give my fibber, my smart ones, a fibber card that's trying to help out our lower learners. Um, so let's say it's five plus three, and I'd put A, B, C, D up there. Corner A is five, corner C, uh, B is six, corner C is seven, corner D is eight. I'm trying to get those fibbers to lie about the answers to see if those lower learners would follow them or are they gonna trust their instincts. So, um, and they, I tell the truth, you have to go to the corners that you get. The fibbers, you can pick, you pick which corner. And I granted, they're going to say, oh, I can't believe you missed that one, but you know what, you're fitting, so that's part of the game. And I tell them that, but um, it, it, I think it, I, I, trying to build some self-confidence in them, you know, you know what, this is what your answer is, trust it, go with it, so we'll see what happens, but it's a good little game, we just started a couple, th done it twice now since I found it, but I'm amazed at how well, how well they like to lie. Um. <laughs> that surprises you. <laughs> I mean, really, it's, it's, it is pretty fun though. It's a good, it, plus it's a good, I mean it's hard to assess it, but once, say, once you know who your fibbers are, um, you understand like, okay, what is the real answer? And then they'll walk you through it. And, uh, okay, it's a good game, so. But get them moving, moving as much as possible. Lenny Gramas is, he has a whole website on getting students out of their desk. And, Help them, help them learn. So, yeah. questions? Anything? Are you doing anything with con then, like uh, Brian's doing? I do it more in my fourth hour uh, with my lab. With my, I have lower. How's that lower working? Lab. They like it. Um, it's just kind of self-paced. And uh, I, the one thing about con is like I can go in there and I can manage. So let's say you struggle with solving equations. I'm going to send you an email and say you need to. Uh, you can go to con, but then you got you have to get five problems in a row correct before you can move on to the next level. Um, so you can you can you know you can control that. I think it's a great. What Brian's doing too, basically, or a little bit more extensive than that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is Brian's that working out okay? That uh, that could be moving up. That. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, you can almost, you can probably use Khan Academy as your guide, you know, for your curriculum. Well, I know that can be used, and I've been kind of waiting for Matt there. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's it's very I mean it, it's an awesome program I mean there are things obviously that are, are probably taught differently than um, than you might teach them you know yeah. in any given subject and then the other thing is that you know you have to cross check and look at the standards and say yeah. you know are are we meeting those standards and how do we go in you know making sure the indicators are met or whatever and. So, and I almost feel like it's, with Khan Academy, like as a teacher, you're really not the teacher anymore because there's so many videos on there that they could watch. You're more of in here just to be a facilitator. Like you could watch. I mean, th I thought about it hard as do we do I just go with it and let them go at their own pace, and then I'm here as a guide to you know if we get stuck on a problem, this is what we're doing. But I don't know. It's, so we're doing with the calculus here. right now. We got a program called uh, uh, Odyssey. Program. Odyssey. Odyssey. And we're working through that right now, which does throw some problems into its own. It's, it, it actually it works pretty well, but again, keeping at their own pace is a challenge yeah. because I um, mean, you just you're going to be all over the place. I only got four people, so it's easier to do with four people mm -hmm. than anything like that. But I mean, you know, so. well, it's, well, it's calculus also. So. And certainly, both of those products, as 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 well as they're written and as well as they're sequenced, are not intended to replace you as the right. teacher. Yeah. That, that is still obviously the, the integral part of the classroom. And so, yeah, is it more self-paced? Is it more student-centered? Yeah, I would say so. But, I mean, it puts a, 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 a huge onus on the teacher to pay attention to where those each individual student is at, you know. And yeah, the question that is, how do you give them a grade? Because everyone's yeah. a grade. How do you assess them in the same way? And how do you give them a grade for that? Yeah. Like in my case of what I'm doing now, it's, I gave them a deadline. I said, your deadline for being prepared for these three sections is Friday. So you have this many days. Some people are blew by that deadline and blew by that, but some are not. But I try to keep something consistent with the time to assess as far as a written assessment, quiz, test, type thing. So I'd like to open it up and just go with that every time to manage, I think. I think you get a smaller class, yeah, definitely. But you know, some of our classes are in the 20s. So. It'd be hard to keep on. It'd be hard to get around to all. Well, I, I, in my class, I have kids that want to come and they do. Uh, they want to do Khan Academy. Well, those are the people who are self-motivated. They're their best students because they have more free time because they get other things yeah. done quicker. So they get a Chromebook and then they're working. Yeah. You know, so they're going to gain a lot, but they already have a lot there already. So yeah, there's going to be a session on the twentieth. Um, a little bit more about Odyssey Word too as a kind of a, as a classroom resource. So. Standing ovation. Wow. I always I always start with the first, the best, and then I go.